In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this little shotgun microphone. It's not the most elegant build ever, as it was one of my first, but there have been lots of requests as to how I made it, so I thought I'd, I thought I'd better make a video about it. So why build your own shotgun microphone? Well, for starters, it's a lot cheaper. This costs about £12 to build, which is around $20. And its performance is pretty good. Throughout the video, I'll show some examples of how it sounds. And there's another video I've uploaded on my second channel called DIY Tests, which I'll post a link to in the description. OK, so how is it built? Well, it has a wind cover, as you can see, which stops the wind amazingly well. Today is actually a brilliant day for using a wind cover because it's so windy. Um, the cover is made of um, furry fabric, which is just sewn together. The actual structure of the microphone is simply a, a shortened bird feeder, which has been glued together with some super glue. In the centre you can see the actual microphone. It is suspended from the main body with an elastic band. The band helps absorb a massive amount of handling noise that you really want to avoid when you're recording. It's almost like a steady cam, but for microphones, really giving good isolation. Not only are handling noises greatly reduced, but you can even run with the microphone and it's not really a problem. You'll be able to hear me just fine now whilst I'm running towards you and despite all of the wind without any sort of bouncing noises on the microphone itself. The downside to using an elastic band is that it can crumble over time so I recommend making strands of your own sort of elastic using silicon sealer and using those instead. Now the microphone capsule itself is a cardioid type, meaning it only picks sounds up from in front of it and rejects those coming from behind. These microphones are quite cheap and easy to get hold of. I wrapped this one in a strip of lead, thinking at the time that it might help to reduce the handling noises down to the extra weight. Thinking about it now, I don't really think it will help, so it's up to you whether you add the lead or not. The wires are as thin as possible and are as long as they can be without touching anything when the microphone moves about. One mistake I made is having exposed solder joints. That's a bad idea because the constant microphone movement just breaks them over time. A better idea would be to have joints somewhere secure and solid so that it's only the wire that will bend. Twisting the wire into a spiral like this is a good way to get extra length, flexibility and structure. The block at the back is the microphone's amplifier um, and it runs off two AAA batteries. Depending on what equipment you intend to use your microphone with, this may or may not be required. Now, the wire is shielded so that it isn't susceptible to electrical interference and has a standard 3.5mm jack on the end. The camcorder I built this for um, had a proprietary shoe adapter so I designed it to go into the tripod mount instead, like so. Right, that covers everything I think. Um, if you have any questions just put a comment and I'll try and reply to it as soon as I can. I'm Matt and thanks for watching. The road's that way and this is a test of directionalness.